was four months old in 1935. Now you can do the math. I don't remember anything about it, of course. But I have had the rich blessing of being a part of the Seventh-day Adventist family all my life. And being here with you uh, confirms that it has been the best experience anybody could have had. And I hope each of you cherishes the privilege of being a part of this remarkable family. Amen. Betsy and I driving here yesterday, we're doing some reflecting. Uh, and, and a comment that had come out of my mouth the day before was what a blessing to be a Seventh-day Adventist as we encountered people who are not Seventh-day Adventists and struggling at an age half ours. Wow. And it occurs to me when we get back, and we're going to have occasion to do that, I'm going to say, hey, you know, it is such a blessing to be a part of the Seventh-day Adventist family. I don't call it a denomination. I don't call it a church. It's a family. And all of us have uh, remarkable connections, and we could talk about that as well. But I'm going to be able to share on the basis of the Adventist lifestyle, the wonderful advantages. And I hope as you think about who you are and, and some of the opportunities you have and some of the things you do, that you will always keep in kind of a focus what it means to be a part of this family. See, I don't, want, I don't want to be involved in anything that would ever step on Ed's toes. And that, that puts into my mind an understanding. He's my son. He's my brother. And we are all part of each other in this experience. Um, Gary, Marilyn, is there any way you can put that last song back on the wall there for me? I want that there for a reason and a little bit. Um, in thinking about what I wanted to share with you this morning a little bit, I um, saw the, I heard you sing and saw the words of that song, and I said, I've got to have that back there. Um, Betsy and I, in our senior years, are part-time associate pastors at the Loma Linda University Church. Uh, we have uh, in the neighborhood of 1,500 retirees wow. in the university church. And about 500 of those are homebound folks who are our major parish. These are people who are largely alone and too much forgotten. And so we get to go and sit with these folks. And I've just explained to Gary a minute ago, a part of our parish are Lou and Marge Venden, who were the remarkable leaders at the University Church a number of years ago now, and leaders, thinkers. Uh, I mean, Lou Venden was a thinker way before his time. But they now are a part of our parish in their declining years and uh, we we sat with them just two weeks ago knee to knee that this is the way Betsy and I like to do it here's Marge and there's Lou and I'm right up knee to knee with Lou so I can reach over and pat him on the knee that is and you, you've got to be wise about this but these dear saints alone as they are largely love to be touched like to know somebody is willing because they're off in some distant place. Does anybody care anymore? Does anybody remember anymore? And so we love to get snuggled up to these folks and let them know how special they are. Uh, I almost always include in praying with them, dear God, please keep, keep dear Lou, for example, reminded that he is your beloved son yes. and as such he is very special in your kingdom and he's also very special to me because I get to love him here and now Amen. so this relationship a, a funny little story that I, I'm sure you'll enjoy Betsy and I were in university 
medical center one evening a few years ago now, visiting a couple, or, or a lady actually, of this couple, a doctor and, and his very, very, well, I'll tell your first name because uh, uh, you won't recognize him anyway, but her name was Rose. We've buried her since. And I got to calling her Lady Rose. And she loved that, Lady Rose. It gave her kind of a, a status, I guess. And one time I was on the telephone in her home and I addressed another lady as Lady, whatever her name was. And she got so upset with me. <laughs> she was the only lady in my life that <laughs> deserve this identity. Well, when we were in the medical center visiting her that time, uh, we had already prayed with her and said goodnight. It was in the evening. And uh, we got about to the door, exiting the room. And uh, she called out, Pastor Dan. And uh, of course, I turned around and I went back. And I said, uh, how can I, what can I do? She said, would you kiss me goodnight? <laughs> I did, and I never left her after that, but what I kissed her goodbye. Those kinds of connections, as I've said it at other, other occasions, those make this ministry we're involved in with seniors some of the best times of our life. I, how much time do we have here? Okay, um, we love these people, and we, we spend about two days a week with them. We're part-time, so we don't go to, and we don't live in Loma Linda, by the way. We live in Glendora, California, which is over closer to Pasadena. We had no idea we'd be doing what we're doing. They asked us, would you be involved with taking care of the seniors here? Well, it took me three seconds, and I said, I resemble that. Why not? <laughs> so... So that's how we got there a dozen years ago now. And so we travel back and forth from Glendora two or three times a week. And uh, as we have begun to snuggle up to these people, they tell us remarkable stories. I, I mean, if you want to be inspired, just let them start a story. And all you have to do is just probe a little and they give you details that they might not have remembered, but we enjoy this so much. Uh, I do most of the visit, well, not most of it, but a lot of it, because Betsy, as an associate pastor, is involved with uh, estate planning. She wor she's worked uh, with Western Adventist Foundation for a number of years after she retired from treasurer over at the Pacific Union in the trust department. So she does that, and and goes with me almost all the time. What we have discovered has given me serious pause. And the discovery is this. These dear, precious, amazing saints are afraid they haven't done enough to be saved even. We have had the extreme experience of having one dear lady who was afraid to go to sleep at night for fear she'd die. This is a reality that is more prevalent than I would have ever thought. You know, they have been saints. I mean, missionaries. They've been workers in this cause. They have brought people to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They've understood teachings. They've understood what you do and what you don't do and all of those kinds of things. And now as they've had to pretty well slow down and stop, they don't do as much. Uh, Money-wise, boy, they are liberal. And they go to every service they possibly can. Um, they can sing the old songs that we've been singing, Pastor. Um, these songs they don't know. I, I'm going to say something 
that if you judge me for it, so be it. I think we've done a remarkable job in the Seventh-day Adventist Church of producing intellectual believers. So we can recite even 28. And we can examine these and, so, and see and say, so you now know what you got to do. And there's been a lot of that got to do, which has produced a, a, not a generation necessarily, but it bleeds into a lot of generations, a hope so generation. Uh, tomorrow night, I, I am going to struggle, and I've been struggling with it. Uh, my sermon title is, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And we have misunderstood, miscalculated, and followed, forgive me, cunningly devised fables. And I've been attending camp meeting all these years, and I heard from my first awareness of understanding, Jesus is coming again. And it's true, proven by the scripture. And he's coming soon. What does soon mean? You know what value Genesis was. And the results are still around. Um, across academies a few years ago, and forgive me, I'm going to share this tomorrow night. Um, across academies, they put out some questionnaires. And the questionnaires had to do uh, with asking academy students what they understood about the teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Some of you may remember that. And uh, among those questions was the, the, the veracity of the Sabbath and certain things about lifestyle and certain things about the Second Coming emphasized on the basis of the fact that our name is Seventh Day Adventist. And the questions related to the return of Jesus were, uh, do you believe Jesus is coming again? Yes, no, maybe. And the general response to that question was yes. The second question, do you believe Jesus is coming soon? Yes, no, maybe. There was more yes, a few no, and quite a number of maybes. The third question was, will you be ready when Our Jesus Lord. comes? Yes, no, I hope so. We know the majority answer, don't we? And hence, we now still have with us a lot of hope so Adventists. Failing to understand that it is not justification by our faith. That's right, that's right, that's right. It's justification by believing that our God is faithful. Amen. So pray for me. I'm, I'm going to try to share this with our congregation tomorrow night based upon the scripture. You know, um, Paul, in writing in Romans about the righteousness of God and the just shall live by faith, had a direct line to Habakkuk 2.4, where the literal translation of the Hebrew of Habakkuk 2.4 is the just shall live by his faithfulness. And we've missed that. So we're going, and then Martin Luther, of course, picked up on that. And a friend of ours by the name of uh, Sigby Tonstad, I don't know if you know that name, he's a physician and a New Testament scholar. And he has translated Romans. And uh, it's remarkable what he has discovered in all of this that I hope is going to be changing at least current generations. And I pray with the seniors about this.
Now, I asked for these words to be back up there. This is a relational, intimate, trusting declaration of our relationship with Jesus. Amen. You, Amen. Draw me close. Never let me go. Um, to hear you say, I'm your friend. And we read that last night. Jesus said, you are my friend. Because no one else can take your place. Relational. That's, that's connected. To feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find the way. Bring me back to you. Well, you get, you get the point here. And our dear folks don't know that song. They never heard that song. Uh, it ain't there, man. And read, and, and I'm going to say something for my old generation. You learned it against guitars and drums. And they don't go to church where there are guitars and drums. And they've missed the message of the reality of the relationship that Jesus wants to have with them too. You got something to pray about. You got something to minister about when you snuggle up to our solid senior population in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And um, so I'll, I'll just give you a few scriptures that uh, I, I share as I come along with them. And one Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy. I'll give you rest. And I can't help but add to that also. Because of the, the burden that they seem to carry, uh, Isaiah 1, 1, is it 18? Yeah. Come now and let us reason. I mean, our God says, I'm willing to sit down with you. You may not think everything the way, I, but let's reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be white as snow. Oh, that these dear saints can know that. They don't have to worry about a thing. And ultimately, if we confess our sins, he is faithful. He is faithful. He's faithful. And just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for being a wonderful family of leaders here in Arizona. We honor you. Of course, we keep track of you because Bobby has been a part of our family for. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for this privilege of being here this morning, Ed. And thank you for this camp meeting. Uh, wonderful saints are gathering here, and we're grateful. Let's pray. Father God. I'm so grateful we can come to you anytime, anywhere, under every circumstance and have the assurance you are with us. I love the words that Jesus pronounced, lo, I am with you always, even unto whatever the end may be, as long as we Adventists are waiting, waiting, waiting. Help us to know how to draw near to you. And so, Father, as this camp meeting continues. May each of us know how to get out of the way enough so the Holy Spirit can have his way with each of us and with the dear saints who come here seeking for a closer walk with you. I pray for Brother Ed in a special way. Thank you, Lord, for him. Thank you for his leadership. And every person here, your lady, your man, your people, give them bright, happy assurance today yes. of your love and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.